In the final part of the course, we are going to focus less on abstractions and more on concrete reality. Well, for better or for worse, we live in Spain, in the European Union, in the 21st century. And we live in a society that is neither a pure market economy nor a system of real socialism. European societies are mixed economies. They are what we call interventionist systems. We will define interventionism, consider its effects, and apply the theoretical knowledge we have covered together in this course to the most important and significant cases of interventionism. We will look carefully at them. As a sample, I have chosen the most significant interventionist measures. We will apply what we have learned in such a way that, mutatis mutandis, you will be able to easily apply the same conceptual framework to any other interventionist measure you wish to analyze. Well, in human action, Mises begins by examining what interventionism is. As you already know, he stresses the difference between interventionism and socialism. But from my point of view, as I have just explained, they are simply two similar manifestations in society, though they differ in degree of impact and severity. According to Mises, interventionism is characterized by the existence of a market. In other words, with such a system, voluntary exchanges are possible within a relatively large sphere. There are entrepreneurs. We are able to exercise entrepreneurship to a certain extent in those areas, though with varying degrees of liberty. There is private property. We can own our apartments and our cars. The sphere of private property is relatively large. Nevertheless, the state does not limit itself to properly defining and defending property rights. Instead, it takes on a number of much broader functions, and these are extremely intrusive and far-reaching. The state interferes in practically all aspects of commercial life. You are studying for a degree in business administration and management. And when you start working and join a company, you will see that a huge amount of your time will go not toward trying to produce, as efficiently and economically as possible, the goods and services your customers want, but to trying to comply with provisions, regulations, orders, administrative commands and bureaucratic red tape or attempting to deal with them in such a way that they affect you as little as possible. I repeat, the state interferes constantly with commercial activity in a great many areas, via commands and prohibitions. The state expropriates half of our income. That is to say, we work for the state until practically July. And there is a process that later gives rise to a series of goods and services which the state does a poor job of providing. Along the way, they are lost, many resources disappear or are corrupted due to inefficiency. In other words, though there is an environment of liberty, we are suffocated, because half of the time we are forced, against our will, to work in order to pay someone else. Furthermore, during the other half of the time, in which we are able to act freely and entrepreneurially, we are hounded by all kinds of administrative and bureaucratic coercion. Why does the state interfere in this way? Well, the answer is clear, as we will see in class when we study the public choice school. It is not that we are masochists or idiots. We are always sold the idea that taxes are necessary and very beneficial, and that thanks to taxes there are roads, hospitals, etc. And everyone says, well, if there were no roads, I would not be able to go from one place to another. Obviously, I must pay taxes, right? And we are told that higher education is available thanks to taxes. Well, I am a university student, and I think taxes are a very good thing, because they enable me to attend the Universidad Rey Juan Carlos. And thanks to taxes, we have health care. If I get sick, I can go to the doctor and be cured. And thanks to taxes, there are pensions. I will need one when I retire. Notice that just as we saw with socialism, very good things, Remember, weasel words are used to conceal taxes, so that people will be willing to pay them. Thus, the existence of the state is identified with a series of essential goods. Thanks to taxes, there is public order. Without taxes, we would have no police, and I might be robbed or murdered. There would be no justice. 
we would be plunged into chaos, it would be a free-for-all. People accept the system because of that argument, and it is a setup, as we will see. What would actually happen is that we would have much better, safer and less polluting roads, much cheaper social security, more pensions, more advanced health care, if there were no monopoly on these services, if they were not public and financed through taxes in this way. This is the area in which, as scientists, we must contribute our knowledge. We will see that this is true as we focus on each of the most significant types of interventionist measures adopted and the conclusion we reach will be our guiding thread in this last part of the course. We will arrive at the following conclusion regarding all spheres. Interventionist measures invariably have unfortunate, regrettable results. But from whose point of view? Well, from the point of view of precisely the one who interferes, the one who backs the measures. Scientifically speaking, this is very important. I will show that each case of intervention is followed by effects which are the exact opposite of the effects intended and desired by the one who seeks and endorses the intervention. Take, for instance, the minimum wage. I support the workers, and I want them to have a higher wage, so I advocate a minimum wage. I will show that a minimum wage harms those it means to favor. That is, it causes unemployment and poverty for precisely those it is intended to benefit. We will see that the same is true with respect to social security. Note how very important the contribution of economic science is in this area. I will demonstrate in scientific terms that each interventionist measure produces effects that are the exact opposite of those intended by the one who endorses or defends the interventionist measure. The effects are harmful and damaging, but I am not referring to my own point of view which would be of no value. It would simply be a subjective value judgment. No, I am referring to the point of view of a person who in good faith defends the interventionist measure. And this is a very important contribution economics makes to humanity.